Welcome to the Dog Trainers Podcast, a podcast created by dog trainers, for dog trainers, or anyone who's ever fallen in love with man's best friend. Episode 13, a deeper look into socialization. Uh, Let me go and take a stab at just breaking down my component pieces to socialization. So hopefully it helps people kind of put things in boxes. Um, So one part of socialization is exposure right? Teach, uh, exposing dogs to environments, people, sounds, and in, se- in essence, putting the dog within an environment that allows them to get used to certain stimulus. And ideally, this environment should be uh, something, you know, that the dog would run into commonly, right? So exposure is going to be really important. Uh, the second thing is in it is teaching um, interactions, Right. And I think one of the subcategories to interactions, we need to make sure we have the ability to influence our dog's self-control. Right. So um, think of it like with our parents, when we were really little, we were taught manners, right? So we were taught to say, please and thank you. We were taught to wait our turn. We were taught to, you know, if we don't have anything nice to say, don't say it at all. So all of, all of these little manners that we were taught when we were kids, in essence, were meant to teach us to control some of our animalistic or emotional tendencies, right? As children. Um, and the more that we exercise them, the better we are with them with maturity. And as we grow up to a, be adults, um, but that's, that's part of interactions. So definitely having self-control, teaching the dog to have self-control, to be able to teach them how to properly interact with things. Um, and so interactions is really important. Um, and I think the last one we'll talk about is, um, Well, interactions itself can actually be broken up into dogs and with humans, right? So anything different living creatures, because definitely the way dogs play is going to be very different than the way dogs play with humans, right? So teaching those two things are really important. And then as a final, we'll talk about, um, uh, I guess, species specific manners, right? So like, for example, a dog can jump on another dog, but if a dog jumps on a human, it's a very different story. Right. So, um, uh, teaching the dog, the time and the place and the context in which they can be a certain way versus, uh, not be a certain way. Right. And I think this is always hard because when socializing dogs, we have to teach them to still be a dog and also understand what humans want from them. So we want a dog who's half dog, half human, a majority of the time. If we live in a very urban or suburban populated area, uh, where they're going to run into a lot of dogs and a lot of people. Right. Yeah, it's definitely. And it's funny because we hear this a lot. I just let my dog be a dog. Mm -hmm. And the only thing about that is, you know, that I take issue with is it's just too vague because to let a dog be a dog. Well, what does that mean? I mean, okay, let's say that your dog is a dog who plays. Okay, that's fine. Does he play with other dogs? Cool. Does he play with you? Cool. Does he play with your grandma? Maybe not so cool. You know, (laughs) does he play with a four year old, you know, lick them and knock them over and stuff like that. So, it, it, context matter because you you were absolutely right earlier you talked about in order for there to be civil society you know with courtesy and, and just understandings of how to how to play nice together you do have to know when it's time to to turn up the energy like and play and have fun and you know and set boundaries and things like that but also you do have to learn how to dial it back too and it is it is a complex dance but dogs are totally capable of learning it in fact they're so good at it that i think among all the other animals in the world that's that's you know, in my opinion, why dogs are the ones that have, have just integrated with us so completely, you know, because they get it, they they know how to work it. And sometimes they need a little help understanding. But maybe what I should say is, they're absolutely capable with the right coaching. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. 100%. 100%. I really agree. Um, I think getting uh, and this is this is where socialization in itself has a has a spectrum or it has different, you know, a different different scales for different people. Um, so let's, I guess let's dive into some bad practices. What yeah. are some bad practices that you've seen? Um, and we're going to bring up the bad ones so we can bring up the good ones. Yeah. Um, so let's, let's go ahead and do it. What, okay. what are some bad practices you think? Here we go. Bad practices. Uh, client of mine, if you hear this, I love you and it's all good because we're going to fix this. Okay. If your, <laughs> if your dog takes issue with another dog on the walk in a yard, don't sit him there in front of that other dog that's barking away and like force him to sit there in patience. Right. You know what we, what we've talked about before, but people don't understand this. They're either gung ho about it this way or that way. And and the bad practice is don't feel like the dog has absolutely no say in anything ever. They should, 
but the, the key is to find a happy medium. So the bad practice is my dog should never, you know, have any sort of reaction to any dog ever. Like, you know, and I'm like, okay, fine. That's fair. But like, why don't you just walk across the street? You know? Yeah. Yeah. Where they get too, uh, they, they get too, uh, micromanage on the behavior or they, right. or, or they sometimes forget your animal is a living, breathing, feeling creature. Right. And, right. And I think that's something really important. Um, you know, there is, um, there was an explanation talking about aggression. Um, and sometimes dogs have good natures, but they have circumstantial aggression, mm -hmm. right? So circumstantial could be, you know, for humans, it happens all the time. Uh, the analogy was, you know, if there is a pastor who's late for his Sunday sermon and on his way to church, uh, someone cuts him off, he'll probably get upset and angry. <laughs> even though he's on his way to give his Sunday sermon, you know? So circumstantial aggression is like, there are some situations our dogs are good people or good dogs, uh, but occasionally they might show circumstantial aggression, right? Mm -hmm. um, and that aggression doesn't necessarily make them bad or evil or anything like that. But just like any other living creature, we have the propensity to not like something as well, right? So sometimes a game in socialization is teaching our dogs to have interest in things that maybe they don't. Right. Yeah. And to, to kind of follow up with that point, circumstantial aggression. I think that another bad practice that I see in dog training is just short sightedness for socialization. And what I mean is if the dog has circumstantial aggression and they try to hammer that down at all costs, mm -hmm. it's possible that you can do it. But, you know, but what are we going to be losing? And, and my example, again, I'd go back to like, if you force that dog, I mean, we could, I suppose, try, I won't, you know, so, but just mm -hmm. anybody listening, like you, I guess you could try theoretically to sit the dog there and force him, you call it prong call or food, whatever, to, to get him to not react. And however long it takes, you could do it. But if you do that, your dog ain't going to trust you. So you, Possibly, yeah. you know, so like you took a step forward to take a few backwards. And, and that's where you have to be kind of, you know, understanding of the overall picture. The key is to get a dog to be able to walk on a leash or whatever the situation is, because those vary in, in a manner that's efficient and safe and effective. And that doesn't mean lunging at and, anybody. It doesn't mean jumping on everybody either. And also something that doesn't tarnish like the trust in the relationship between you and your dog, right? right? Because dogs are keeping score. Like they see us put them in fucked up situations and they remember it. And I remember when I was a kid, we had a dog, Ralph. He was an Australian cattle dog. He was really sweet. Loved him to death. Um, and he hated one of our other dogs growing up. And my brother, till this day, he regrets it. And he's all like, he said, the first fight that these two dogs ever got into, um, he told Ralph to stop and, and lay down. And he did like, he listened perfectly mm -hmm. Well, the other dog who wasn't trained mm -hmm. took advantage of him and bit him. Mm -hmm. And my, my brother goes, he never trusted me after that time. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, he's like, I'm not going to listen to you. I gotta, I gotta fend for myself. Yeah. Um, then again, you know, we were kids and the dogs weren't trained that well, but uh, at least they had a little bit of that rapport. Um, but yeah, I think that's important as well. Like sometimes if we put dogs in bad situations, um, they are trusting us to continue to not make them uncomfortable and things like that. So, um, however, even though in socialization, a little bits of stress are important so that dogs can get over it. We do have to have a better gauge of knowing when we're it's overboard or it's too much for that dog. Exactly. Right. Um, let's see. Uh, so I guess a bad practice or broken trust, um, dogs who aren't ready for certain levels of socialization, right? So as we talked about before, uh, people who take their dogs who've never socialized before with other dogs and they stuff them in a dog park filled with other dogs. Um, this can, has the potential to go bad really quickly. Um, and uh, the, the reason for that it's, it's because usually the dog doesn't have the social skills um, to be able to, to survive that event or to have an enjoyable time, right? The key with socialization is how can we expose the dog with enough frequency um, or leaving him with the right emotional taste in his mouth to be able to want to experience that again or not be fearful of experiencing that again. Right. right. Um, let's see. Other bad practices that I see in dog socialization, when dogs or when dog owners think that socialization has to do with play and interaction, people forget that socialization also has to involve you as the, as the owner, as the caretaker of the dog. So, so many times people are so proud that their dog plays with all these dogs at the dog park, 
But guess what? If you tried to intervene and tell your dog to stop, he wouldn't listen to you, right? Or you ask him to come, he won't listen to you. And the reason that, that becomes a problem over time is because at the dog park, the dog has learned my owner is going to sit on the bench for 30 minutes and not pay attention to me. So I don't have to listen to anyone for 30 minutes. Right. And so in the case where the dog gets in a fight or there's a dog who shouldn't be in the dog park that starts an altercation with your dog or your dog gets into trouble or starts eating something or stealing stuff. If you don't practice being an active part of your dog's socialization experience, in essence, being your dog's referee, um, it's really, it's, it, it's not healthy for your relationship with the dog. So, and I think honestly, your relationship with the dog is what create, what allows our dogs to have a very long social career with other dogs and other humans. Right. A hundred percent. I think, you know, so much of it just falls to, to I mean, I guess it, this makes perfect sense, but so much of it just falls down to what people think of socialization. And it's just exactly this. It's, you know, when we look at, I'm going through the list as you're talking right now of bad practices and it's, you know, people are short-sighted, they simplify, they don't understand why it's important to put your dog in situations in which they can flourish. If you put them in unreasonable circumstances, they're going to lose trust for you and, mm-hmm. you know, that, you know, it needs to involve you. And so, yeah, definitely. I mean, these things all, it's funny when we talk about it in a sense, and then we kind of come full circle and it still makes sense. It's like checking your work. So yeah, mm-hmm. I-, I couldn't agree more. Do you want to move on to some good practices? Let's do it. <laughs>